Coffee is the sweet nectar of life that flows through every bitter morning. It wakes one up from the dead. And whatever, I'll just drink it. Okay. No, I drink coffee black. There is no coffee too strong, only men too weak. It's got a halo, come on. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Jake Make. So, I own a particular book, the U.S. Army Improvised Munitions Handbook. I'm pretty amazed that they actually print this. It's full of all kinds of information that um, most people think most people shouldn't know. Basically, how to make explosives and propellants, mines and grenades, small arms, weapons and ammunition, mortars and rockets, incendiary devices, fuses, detonators, and delay mechanisms, and miscellaneous stuff out of a lot of ordinary materials. Like how to make a shaped penetrator charge with a coke bottle, booby traps, landmines, grenades, all kinds of crazy stuff in here. Which, I mean, I kind of recommend it. I mean, don't do a lot of the stuff in here, but you know, it's fun, fun read, you know? I was reading this one day and on page 17, has a chapter on initiator for dust explosions. And I'm reading this, not really paying much attention, until I realize that they're telling you how to make an initiator to blow up a big box of flour. This particular unit works quite well to initiate charges of five pounds of flour or a half gallon of gasoline. This will destroy a 2,000 cubic foot enclosure. So you're telling me army handbook, that flour can blow up a building. Not just flour, also stuff like coffee creamer, cornstarch, like this type of powder. It all works about the same. Flour, cornstarch, coffee creamer. I'm using coffee creamer because looks better on a YouTube title. Uh, but obviously this stuff doesn't burn on its own, sitting on a table. Let's demonstrate that. Nothing super impressive, right? However, watch what happens when we suspend some in the air. Drop it past this torch. The stuff actually burns pretty stinking well. Why is that? I'll explain. So why does this burn so well when you drop it in the air, but it doesn't burn at all when it's sitting on a table? Well, when it's sitting on a table, all the dust particles are closely packed together. You see all these little dots? All those are dust particles. They're super, super packed close together on top of each other. And the only oxygen that can get to them is right on top. So as we saw, only the very top of it will burn and it will burn slowly because it's not got enough oxygen. 
However, when you suspend all of those particles in midair, they're surrounded, they have space, and they're surrounded by oxygen on all sides. So we have oxygen surrounding the particles. Remember the fire triangle, fuel, oxygen, and heat. Without any of these three things, fire doesn't exist. Without enough oxygen, fire goes out. Without enough fuel, fire goes out. Without enough heat, no fire. Pretty much anything will burn if it has enough oxygen surrounding it. Even stuff like flour, which isn't that flammable in and of itself, when you suspend it in the air with lots and lots of oxygen, the stuff burns pretty stinking fast, which is awesome. <laughs> Alrighty, now I'm sure y'all have a pretty good idea where I'm going. Well, duh, of course you do. You saw it in the intro. Let's shoot some of this out of the cannon into a flame. So we have a humongous flame ball out of coffee creamer. Because why the heck not? <laughs> I'm going to be using my PVC air cannon, which I'm going to hook up to a remote detonator type deal here. You remember this from uh, the jack-o'-lantern flamethrower video probably. I'm going to show you how to hook this up to a solenoid valve type cannon like this so that we can, from a distance, hit this button and trigger the solenoid. Actually, I'm not going to explain exactly how to do it because I already have all this wired up. Instead, I'm going to link in the description to a great video by Colin Furs on how to wire it up. And I'm just going to go ahead and wire it up myself real fast. Now for the barrel, I'm thinking we're not going to need very much. I have this barrel, which is a bit weird because I've got a number of different sizes of PVC duct taped together. I am just going to cut right here the duct tape and I'm just going to use this, um, this length right here as my barrel. I don't think we're going to need much. You know, I don't want like a long barrel with just a little bit of powder in the bottom. I want a short barrel so we have a wider spread. I think that'll be better. There we go. Perfecto. You know, let's pause for a minute and think about something important. Like subscribing and hitting the like button. and ringing the bell. <sighs> it's been raining, so like everything is so soaking wet that it's literally impossible to catch anything on fire right now. The great thing about this type of a flamethrower system is like I demonstrated earlier, this stuff is not very flammable at all on the ground. It's gonna make a big fireball in the air, but the second it falls to the ground or touches anything else, it's gonna go out. It's very hard to be dangerous with this kind of a thing compared to like, say, gasoline or something, which is flammable in the air and on the ground. So, what I want to do now is put a bunch more of this stuff in there and a lot less pressure to see if we can get a lot more and lower, like, so not such a tall flame, but like wider, more bigger. That's what I want. I want more bigger. <laughs> I'll go like 25 PSI. See what that does. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> As you can see, it's pretty much just going really tall. You got one, you know, not very wide cloud going straight up. I think the reason for that is, as you can see, we've got this 
um, not very wide barrel that's pretty tall. Um, what a lot of people do with these is they'll like put a funnel on the end of their cannon and then you know you have a very wide thing, the air is coming up through a very wide thing so you get a much wider spread. I'm going to go ahead and try to do that in a second. Problem is I need to actually like find a funnel and stuff. This is ridiculous. I'm going to go up to, I'm going to do 40 psi again just to see if I can push it up as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Pretty stinking awesome, right? <laughs> so much fun, oh gosh. It's really easy to do, obviously, so like for some DIY special effects for like movie making and stuff, it's it's pretty awesome. You know what else? You know what else cool you can do with this? <laughs> and on that note, Jake out! See you in the next video. I know this has all been real fun, but you know what a real, true man does when he sees an epic cinematic explosion? He walks away.